So here's a look at my new computer build uh, for this year. So we have the RM850X power supply unit by Corsair. It's fully modular. Then we have the Arctic MX4 thermal paste. Two MP600 NVMe drives. One one terabyte, one 512 gigabyte. And then we have two Arctic 140 millimeter fans for the front of the case. Next, we also have a Patriot Viper RAM kit, 64 gigabytes. That's two times 32 gigabytes at 3600 megahertz each. We have the GeForce RTX 3070 by gigabyte. We have the Aorus Ultra motherboard X570 chipset. The Noctua NH-U12S Chrome Max Black CPU cooler. And the AMD Ryzen 5950X. So next we'll take a look at putting this stuff all together and then head on over to the benchmarks. The case is the NZXT 510i. It's simplistic, small, but fits everything we need. We'll start off by putting in the power supply unit, the two fans in the front, and then we'll take our motherboard out and place it on the box or some area where we can work on it. You'll notice that on the motherboard, you'll see these numbers saying DDR4, A, A2, B2 first. That's where you want to put your RAM sticks first, so we'll put those in. Next, we take off the stock attachment here, and we start attaching the spacers that were included with our CPU cooler. It'll connect right up to the backplate, but look at the instructions on your CPU cooler. We'll take out the Ryzen 5950X. Be careful not to bend the pins on the bottom. Don't use it as a comb. Don't do anything with it. Place it carefully into the slot, matching the triangles on the bottom left corner. Then we'll take our MP600 NVMEs, I will remove the heatsink just because it won't give us much clearance and the motherboard already has some shields. On the shields, I'll take off the blue plastic. They're sticky so you don't want to touch them. Place in the NVMe and slowly pull that shield down and fasten it with the screw. Next we take out the CPU cooler and our arctic thermal paste. On top of the CPU, we could place a tiny pea-sized dot in the center of the thermal paste. You don't need much more. And then we'll fasten the CPU heatsink. Make sure once you put the fan back on the CPU heatsink, you attach the fan into the CPU fan slot. And then we should be ready to go and have everything all kind of set up. So from here, we can start to place this into the actual case. So I usually lay the case down flat on the ground just to make it easier and then be careful with putting the motherboard in. Um, in some cases, I'll have a tight fit. You'll see these little standoff spacers here. You want to match the motherboard to line up with those perfectly and kind of sit on top of it. Make sure all the areas where the screws go into, you can see right through uh, and that they're lined up properly. This might take a little bit of time and it's a very tight fit as you can see. Now we have to start connecting everything up to our motherboard. So these are all the spots that I have to connect things to. Uh, the right is just our motherboard power. Bottom is power on, power off, USBs. Bottom left is sound. Top left is CPU power. Fan pins on the right and USB 3.1. It's fairly straightforward. So now we can connect in our graphic card, connect up the power cords to our graphic card, turn on the computer, see what happens. I ended up getting a red DRAM error on the motherboard, which usually means RAM is incorrectly seated, but it wasn't. Um, so it's usually because the CPU in this case is really new and the BIOS might not support it or the motherboard won't. So I had to look up the motherboard's uh, Q flash feature, which will allow me to flash the motherboard's BIOS without actually getting visual input from the screen. Because right now the computer wouldn't boot at all. So I actually had to get a USB drive, format it to FAT32, put on the file, um, put it into the USB slot and press that button, and then it flashed. And a little while later, I actually got screen feedback and it flashed the BIOS and everything was good. I checked to make sure temps are okay. That detects the M2 NVMEs and uh, kind of just look through the BIOS to make sure everything is looking correct. 
everything did look correct. Uh, so next I could install Windows, and then after that I would enable the XMP profiles to make sure my RAM is using the 3600 MHz. Windows installation extremely fast with NVMEs. Takes a little bit of time to copy over from slow USBs, but after that it's super fast. So now CPU-Z benchmark, 11,865 right out of the box. Pretty good. Um, this could probably be improved with tweaks and adjustments, but this is just first go at everything. So 3D Mark's Time Spy giving us 13,599 points. You can see the graphics average about 89 and 77 frames per second. Our Crystal Disk Mark, the NVMe's benched around kind of four to five gigabytes of read and write. Cinebench R20 giving us 9938, almost three-fourths away of that 60-core 120-thread Intel Xeon, so pretty impressive there. Now looking at Cinebench R23, which was recently released, we'll give it a run and see what its uh, score is. So it renders pretty quick. Definitely those extra cores help. So we can see our score here, and it is 25,226. So it's just underneath that Threadripper uh, and above the Intel Xeon 24 cores. So that's, again, pretty impressive for a 16 core 32 thread CPU to get that kind of performance. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button below and stay tuned for more content I'll be posting.